Hey everybody, this is Ivan from the Kilcher Homestead YouTube channel. I'm about to go on an expedition to those mountains with my brother-in-law Lars. We're gonna be flying in in a float plane, and landing in a lake at the base of a glacier. We're going back there to do some whitewater rafting, hike up some mountains. He wants to try to shoot a black bear, and we're gonna be looking for more adventure along the way. If you wanna come along on that ride, stay tuned. <laughs> Just getting things packed up here. I got, uh, trying to get all my camera stuff together. I got a bunch of GoPro stuff. Obviously I got to bring a bunch of batteries. Clothes, not a lot of clothes. Really just like one pair of car camo cargo pants, a couple camo shirts, uh, long underwear, socks, hat, you know, so I need to bring that stuff. Got my food stuff pretty much figured out here behind me. I got a uh, shell insulated, or not insulated, but just rainproof shell. Camo snow pants, camo shell. Probably not gonna bring that camo backpack. Red dry bag, food, kind of machete thing, water, those kinds of things. Tent, you know, and then um, sleeping bag, obviously. Uh, we'll go outside and look out my pack raft. This is my pack raft. It's an inflatable boat. That's pretty cool. This is kind of the kit that goes with it. Technically, all of this stuff can fit into this one blue stuff sack. Well, my, my dry suit is in here too, so I can't bring that. Life jacket, helmet for whitewater rafting, a backpack, another tent. I don't think I'm gonna bring this one because I have another one that's way smaller and packs up lighter. So anyways, that's kind of my kit. I think I'm pretty much ready to go. Now it's just a matter of getting it all here, one spot and meeting up with Lars and loading it on the plane. So I just made it to my friend Eric's outfit here. Uh, he's going to take us across the bay. Pretty exciting. He's got a pretty cool stuff going on here. He's got a helicopter. He's got a float plane. So we're taking the float plane in to uh, the Woznozinski, which is pretty cool. One of my favorite places to go to. We just got loaded up in the plane. These are the coolest planes. De Havilland. They haven't made brand new ones of these for a long time. This is one of the most classic Alaska bush plane, or just bush plane in general. A de Havilland Otter, or no, sorry. This is a de Havilland Beaver. The Otter is the bigger version of this. But these ones actually have better stall performance, which means short takeoff and landing, and uh, super cool airplanes. <laughs> Flip it around, did you say? So here we are at camp. 
we got dropped off by the float plane. It's so cool coming into places in a float plane. It really feels like you were remote. You get dropped off in the middle of nowhere and there you are. And uh, I'm super happy to be here. This is just a phenomenal place to get to come back to every time I've been here before. I've been coming to this spot for probably close to 20 years and rock climbing back in here. I've set all kind of lines, first descents on kind of the climbing crag in this area. So it's pretty neat. This is like my old stomping ground. I haven't been here for a couple years, but it feels good to land, be back in my old, my old hood, so to speak. In this spot here, you can see, I mean, just from where I'm at, Right from where I am right now, I can probably see 15 different waterfalls, which is amazing. There's kind of some cool defined campsites back in here. This is really interesting here. I'm seeing a whole bunch of moose tracks in the mud. It almost looks like a couple of bulls Bull moose might have been fighting. That's kind of one reason why you see a whole bunch of, of, uh, of tracks in one area like this. There's definitely some big moose right in here. Look at the size of that moose track. So I've got big hands and my hand totally fills that moose track. That's a big moose. Nice. Sun's coming out. It's kind of good to dry out my tent just a little bit. So I slept here last night. Slept good, actually. Uh, but now we want to start moving down the river. So I'm going to pack things up and get close to the water and blow up the boats. So, got all packed up, just kind of like a halfway pack up. I've got bangles and dangles and crap all over myself here, but I don't usually backpack like this, but really only need to oh, go down to the lake, go set up our rafts. Most of this gear is going to go inside of my raft, so I only need to pack up to go a little ways. Now it's time to convert to water mode. Right now I'm in dry mode, which is, everything is dry. Over the next 10 minutes, we're gonna convert to water mode, which means everything is wet. And it's pretty fun. Ooh, I just got a text from my wife. Just texted Eve this morning, I just got one back. Wait a minute. Oh, I just got one from you, Lars, saying checking. 
Did you did you text me on the enrage? Yeah, I did. I, I just texted somebody that I know is fine. I got it. He just texted Lars back saying, I got it. He texted me, I texted him. Then we get separated, we can kind of use these things. And they're working so far. Oh, and I just got one from Eve. Sometimes that's how these things work, these satellite texting devices. You send one out and you actually get one back in too if there's one kind of waiting in the queue. So I texted her and I said, Hi, I slept good last night at the climber's camp. There's so many mosquitoes here. Little bits of sun poking through. Very little rain. She said, I'm glad you slept good. Have fun today. So these rafts are super cool. They're called alpaca rafts. They have a zipper, an airproof zipper, which to me is like, I don't even understand how that works. It's like science fiction. But because it has this airproof zipper, you can put things inside of the boat, inside of the whole rubber pontoon, rubber ducky thing. So it's pretty cool. Here you can see this is the this is the zipper, which they say it's the most kind of one of the most fragile parts of these boats. So you really don't want to be like opening it and closing them all willy-nilly. But that allows you to fill the boat with all of your gear, keeps the center of gravity really low with the boat. And then uh, you zip it closed again, and you can blow the boat over there. Super cool. I wanted to get cool drone shots of us going across this lake with the glacier in the background, but one of the propellers on my drone is seized up. Ah, so that is not happening. See, folks at home will just have to be happy with the, with the GoPro footage. All right. Is that all goats way up there, Lars? Yeah. On that craggy face way up there? Uh, uh, the tree right here. But look up there. I think I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You see that? Up above the grassy plains, up there, straight above it. There's a baby down at the bottom. There's a, there's a couple babies at the bottom of that whole pack. Oh, and there's a black bear below them. Oh yeah, there is. That's a big old bear. It's a big bear. That's a long ways up there, though. 
<sighs> it's a long ways up there. Oh, that's just that far. No, we could be up there. So we see a bear, but it's probably about 1,800 feet up the side of the mountain. With a whole bunch of goats below it, or above it, I mean. We can see like 14 goats, and there's a black bear on the hillside right below it. But it's up high. You know, it's basically like just below snow line up on that mountain top up there. So it's a long way to have to go. If we did go, we probably would go from somewhere over here and, and there's a ridge and we would walk up this ridge and hopefully we can get to kind of those grassy fields and then kind of make our way up through there. All right, we're gonna go wander around up here. Get out of the boats. We'll wander around and see, uh, see what we can see. broke my GoPro screen, it tipped over right there. Drag. Sometimes trying to figure out exactly how the approach is gonna go, the first little bit can be a little tricky. Especially, sometimes the hardest part is getting up out of tree line, getting out of the bushes. Always trying to look for the easiest route up. I kind of saw a spot from the lake that looked maybe passable. Yeah, and then once we get up, get up through there, I feel like then there's kind of these yeah, these steps bits. that take us over to the ledge. Yeah. Not the best way to come down if we're super heavy with uh, meat on our backs, but it's doable. We're gonna go back and get our backpacks and rifles, gear, and then we're gonna walk up a mountain. I figure we're actually doing those goats a favor. That bear is basically like the proverbial alligator in the pond to the goats. He's just waiting down there with his mouth, ready to catch a goat. So we pull the bear up the mountain, the goats are gonna be like, hey, thanks, that's kind of you. Got my food bag hung up in a tree here. Should make it a little bit safer. Ultimately, black bears can still climb trees, so it's not a sure bet, but at least this way it's further away from our rafts and makes it a little bit harder for bears to, uh, to get to the food. And I have some with me too, so it's not all of our food. All right, working our way up the mountain. I mean, we've only climbed 40 feet probably out of about maybe 2,000, but you gotta start somewhere. crazy to see, look at this glacier and see how much it's melted back. Like it's probably moved back a half of a mile. And in order for it to move back half of a mile, that means that, that the surface of the glacier dropped like probably a thousand feet of ice has been lost since I've been coming here over the last 20 years. And based on that same rate, it's very easy to see that within another 20 to 30 years from now, if I come back here, it'll be gone, like completely gone. And when I first came here, you know, like 21 years ago, it looked so massive that it was hard to imagine how that could change. But you see it and it actually is changing dramatically. And it's pretty shocking, actually. We just flushed up a spruce grouse. They are tasty. We don't got any way to get it. I don't got a slingshot or anything, but there it is. Just flew away. I wish I had my slingshot. So this bear that we were looking at, he worked his way across 
the field, kind of this big grassy meadow up there on the side of the mountain and went behind uh, a rocky pinnacle. Hard to tell exactly where he went. He started working his way down. Now we can't see it anymore, but I think he's gonna have to pop out somewhere here in the next few minutes. So we're just gonna kind of sit tight and see where he pops out. Cause if he decides to go further south, then it is too hard potentially to get at that bear. But if he keeps working his way down the mountain instead of across it, there's a good chance we can get to it. Now it's just a little bit of waiting. Made it up probably about maybe 900 feet. Kind of a good open spot here where we can just spend some time looking around. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna sit here for maybe 20 minutes and see if we can see that bear, make a choice about where it's going. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. And what do you think he saw? And what do you think he saw? It started raining on us. But we're making our way up. Probably only have about another 450, 500 feet to climb. Which is pretty good. Wet. For sure. But I'm having fun. Come on an adventure. And you're coming along with me. Thanks. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified when I'm doing more wacky stuff off the homestead. Like walking up a mountain to look for bears and rafting down rivers and stuff. Takes extra work bringing this camera up the hill, but it's worth it because I know how much people like to watch it. And I want to thank you for that. Getting up here to the point now where there's still snow. Look at that, huh? Snow actually sometimes can be worse, sometimes can be better. Right now, we've been going through the grass, which is like knee deep and difficult. But snow is, looks pretty hard packed. It is basically like a set of stairs going up the mountain. If it's too hard, you can slide down it. If it's soft, you'll punch through it. But right now, it's absolutely perfect for walking up. You just gotta kinda kick in your feet with each step as you go. And that makes a little stair. The last place we saw the bear was right up there, kind of on that next little shelf, which is about 300 feet above us. He went off over this edge over here. So we're gonna try to go up the snow and then across this green little grassy field right there. Peek over that edge and hopefully we'll be able to see the bear. We'll see. Because we haven't been able to see where that bear went, we think it's still in that ravine. A lot of these ravines like this are avalanche shoots. They were avalanches came down the mountain and piled up a lot of snow from this winter. Sometimes they take goats down the mountain with them. So maybe the reason that bear is in that gully is maybe he found a winter kill goat and he's just over there munching on it. Either that or sleeping or something, but hopefully it's still there. We got a pretty good view from up here. We got our boats. Our boats are down over this edge down there, about 2,000 feet below us. And we've got to go out this river all the way out that river into the far distance out there and around the corner another bunch of miles that's how we get back out of here to catch mac bay where my dad's gonna pick us up with our boat all right we've reached kind of a little hill here another hundred feet up and we should be able to look over into the place where the, that was the last place we saw the bear make its way so we're gonna push up this hill real quietly, peek over the edge. Hopefully we, hopefully he's still there. It's very steep here. One slip and 
you're gonna have a real bad day. Lars, there it is. We see it. We see the bear. It's 60 yards away from us. bear went right down. Just like we thought. Picking up this hill. Right over that ledge. It was a great Now the real work begins. Oh no. What did we do? <laughs> Consequences of our actions. And we're going to have to pay for it in blisters on Blood, our feet. Sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Bear's rolling down the hill, unfortunately. He's right here. Yeah, he's he's right here. I'm gonna keep eyes on it until you get over here, though. bear but I'm kind of glad it's not a super big bear we got to hike back down 26 feet off this mountain Lars that probably means we can bring its cape yeah Pretty cool. this part of Alaska has so many bears absolutely so many bears that you know being able to harvest one is pretty special also absolutely not worried at all about a mountain bears, you know, or anything like that. There's so many bears and this is something that ethically isn't really a big problem. And a small bear like this is gonna taste really good. Spring bears are super tender. It's gonna be a good bear. I'm pretty happy about that. boned out put into our packs now we're gonna work our way down this ravine it's kind of a little bit gnarly here at the beginning and a little sketchy but once we get down this section then we can basically slide down on the snow and probably descend about another six seven hundred feet so that would be really really easy now just go slow for a few minutes here so it's really important when you're going on scree like this to kind of stay somewhat together in a group. You don't want to get too far ahead of somebody. Start knocking rocks down on the lower person. That's when it can get pretty dangerous. 
So we're just gonna kind of go slow and stay together here until we get down onto the snow. This spot is a little bit weird, but there's some good bushes ah, to hold on to. Got me with both of them. I know. I'm okay though. You're almost out of it. Okay. I mean, I think it's got the button. Yeah. here so we can stay in this snow patch and ride it all the way down 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 quite a ways here we won't be able to take it all the way down to the water but we already dropped 200 feet a lot faster and easier than if we were in the rocks and the bushes and the grass so save some time Kind of in this big gravel moraine here rock slide here i think it's going to be easier to walk through that yeah it's hidden snow under it Just in a few minutes, we dropped 700 feet. That's a major help. So we've about reached the end of the snow glissade down here. Lars is right at the tail end of it now. You found the end, huh? Yeah, okay. That's as far as we can take the snow down the mountain. Now it's back to the push wagon. Oh, I'm sitting in the creek. Ah. I got a wet butt.
think it's time we get out of this creek. Too many slips, trips, and falls. We are almost back down the mountain. We're on that very first, very first spot that was super steep before working our way down it, but we're only like two, three hundred feet from the water over there. So we're getting pretty close. We should be back down to the boats here in just a few minutes. I think that officially marks the end of the mountain. We are officially back off of the mountain. Right in the last little couple, oh I'd say 50 feet back to the beach. That's pretty cool. We went up, got a bear, and came back down, and nobody got hurt. Well, other than the bear. The bear got kind of hurt, but that's life. The realities of being a human on the planet is something gets consumed for something else to survive. We are back at the boat. <sighs> Feels good to be back down off the mountain. my uh, dry suit on so if I fall in the water because this is glacial water there's literally a 10,000 year old ice cube sitting at the far end of this lake so it is as close to freezing as water can get without freezing is what the temperature of this lake is so you fall in you get wet it is almost a hypothermic situation immediately you need to get warm get dry fire the whole deal with this dry suit on though you stay dry so that's pretty cool we have converted to water mode now as we're going to paddle across this lake and start heading down the river.
ready to rip. Okay, we've reached the river, into the lake, and start of the river. The white water begins now. So we just finished, went through that last section. That section was easy. This next section is a little bit more complicated. It's called the rock garden and there's a lot of rocks about the size of dinner tables. And unfortunately, right now the river is kind of low. So that means, you know, we might get hung up in a few places, but we'll see. Don't know till we try. seat there's a seat cushion an inflatable seat cushion here and I think I needed to add a little more air to it, it feels better now a little bit more firm it also helps with the buoyancy next section coming up to the wall is like always the shallowest part one of like it's super wide and horribly shallow so we'll see how we do i want to be a little bit further back from lars just so that um he has a little bit more room to scout things he can tell me if he went the wrong way give me a little bit of input on that uh, it's also i think this boat goes a little bit faster than his in white water and so i'm uh, kind of bumping up against him last time We're going straight into a wall behind me. The water takes you straight into the wall. I kind of got to hook it. Got it tight. Right around the corner. spray skirts on now but every time we get out spray skirts are kind of difficult to put on and take off every time I mean it's easy to get out of the boat but it's just hard to put it on it's a pain in the butt we keep coming up against these shallow spots where there's no point staying in the boat and take my spray skirt off put it back on again but it looks like for this one maybe it can stay on so I'm gonna latch it and 
Those the last words though. Bumper boat. Like the log ride at Disneyland. Ow. So we made it most of the way out the river. So you can see the ocean out there. But I just talked to Eve. I was hoping she was gonna come pick me up, but she said that the weather is too terrible on the bay. Not even the water taxis are running is what she said. So there's a family that has a cabin almost at the river mouth. And I called them and they said, we are welcome to stay at the cabin tonight, which sounds awesome. They even have a sauna. We're gonna go check that out. Wow. Look at this place. Yeah. Let's go check out the sauna. Yeah, I said, hey, can I stay there? And he said, oh yeah, get in there, man, get in there. You guys get in there, stay whatever cabin you want. It was pretty cool, very, very welcoming. You got some dry get it. wood and some lighter fluid. And a lighter. And a lighter. Ready to Out of jail. What a sweet ending to this adventure. <laughs> we got cold. It's cold coming down the river. Even though we've got dry seats on, you're not always warm with all the rain oh, and splashing. It is pretty cool. All right, here we are. I'm driving a boat. I got a call from them last night and they had wrapped it out the river. They wanted to pick up yesterday, but yesterday it was blowing 40 knots and nobody was going anywhere. So they stayed in a friend's cabin, which was really nice for them. And this morning the weather got better. And so um, my dad and I and um, our friend Carl all got on our boat and the three of us combined were able to get the boat out and go get Lars and Ivan. Here we go. So last night we were not able to get picked up by a boat like we were hoping. We could have stayed in our tents, but I contacted my friend Logan and he let us use his cabin, which was so nice. Now we are uh, gonna get back in our boat. I just locked up the cabin, turned the propane back off. Now we're gonna get back in our boats, head out to the water and hopefully Eve will be here soon with the landing craft to pick us up. So saying goodbye to this portion of the trip back on the river. Hopefully we get picked up soon.
What a gift. But we're back on the river. Albeit it's pretty short, pretty short river trip. We're gonna meet up with Eve. It's coming with uh, her dad. So we are here on our boat. Go pick up Ivan and my brother Lars, who are just coming out of the Woznizinski River. It's a super low tide and it's just a very shallow tidal area. So they're gonna have to paddle kind of quite a ways out here. So we're just gonna hang out here. This is about as close as we can get. And then they have to paddle their little butts out here, which is kind of tricky in a pack raft. This is actually one of Eve's first times running the boat without me on board, which is really good for her to do. And she still has the support of her dad. Uh, Craig, who's got a lot of boat time to uh, help just, you know, make sure that she's not missing anything and stuff, which is great. Makes me feel better, makes her feel better, but I think she's trying to do it all herself, like as far as running the boat and think of all the things, so it's pretty cool. I'm proud of her for doing it. Just drag me right up. Drag you right up? Yeah. Just a little, not that, yeah. The rope. There we go. Great. That'll work. Perfect. Can you open the gate? <laughs> yeah, do you want to open the gate up just to try? We made it back to the boat. Trip success. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. That helps make it happen. Super thankful to all you people that are watching this video. And uh, we might not have done it the right way, but we sure didn't do it the wrong way. We did it the kilter way. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. We'll see you next time.